It was another amazing day in the office. I'm Lucas Eddy and I work for Climb. Don't get me wrong, I love my job and the times I get to be outside, but some days in the office just drag on and on and on. Now, I like emails just as much as the next person, but sometime towards the end of spring, I got one that really piqued my interest. Gundis and Sakhan, two friends of mine I had met last year riding, asked me if I wanted to ride adventure bikes in Turkey. My mind was made, but really I needed to see if my boss John would let this happen. So it went kind of like this. Hey John, you got a minute? Yeah, you bet. So, I've got some friends who want me to go ride in Turkey with them. Okay, sounds cool. So I said, we want to do a big ride across the whole country. Sounds like a good opportunity. Do you think it's possible? So, how long are you thinking? It sounds crazy, but it's a huge country and we want to do the whole thing. So, they're thinking like six weeks. Oh, wow. That's kind of a long time. So I started explaining how it'll be a great gear testing opportunity, especially with it still being winter here. And I could just see the wheels spinning in his mind about how long I'd be out of the office. John ultimately settled on two weeks for this trip. It wasn't ideal, but we'd make it work. Okay, great. Thanks, John. You're the best boss ever. I won't let you down. With John's approval and a few short weeks to plan, I got my things together and packed up. We'd be doing a mix of camping and hotel hopping, so I still needed to pack kind of light. The first stage was heading south from Idaho to get on a variety of flights to make the hop over to Turkey. After the fun TSA things were over, we finally got in the air. At this point, it started to feel real, like this trip was actually going to happen. I always have my doubts behind the scenes until things start happening for real. After 13 hours of flying, we landed in Istanbul. Istanbul is the biggest city in Turkey. It's an extremely old city with a ton of history, like a huge melting pot of Eastern and Western cultures. Typically, I'm not a big touristy kind of guy, but you can't resist taking in the sights, the smells, sounds, flavors, scenes, and overall atmosphere of the various neighborhoods in the city. After a bit of touristing, KTM provided us with our bikes for the entire journey, starting with an entire day of highway riding to reach Cappadocia. Located in central Turkey, north of the Taurus Mountains, Cappadocia is an exhausting road ride away from Istanbul. The ancient district has a rich history and unique landscape, with buildings carved out of rocks and cliffs. It was never an agricultural powerhouse, so it never became developed and suburbanized, but now people travel from all over to see the otherworldly landscape. We had gotten a hotel the night before and woke up early to watch the famous hot air balloons fly at sunrise. With excitement fueling our bodies, we headed out for a day of exploring. Our bikes for this trip were all KTM adventure bikes, two 790s and a 1290R. I hadn't yet ridden the new 790, so I hoped for a chance to try it out at some point. Watching the sunset, we were already talking about what we'd do and where we'd go tomorrow. Our bikes were running well, the gear we were testing was breaking in nicely, and we were excited for what the next days would bring. We headed northeast out of central Turkey, busting our way into the mountains, close to the Black Sea. Again, we didn't have much time, so we had to put in these big miles to get where we needed to be. There's a mountain road in the north that's supposed to be one of the most dangerous roads on Earth. So naturally, it was one of the things that we wanted to do right away.
the open green mountains eventually turn to ragged cliffs and tighter hairpin turns. You definitely feel small and insignificant in terrain like this. But soon we reached the valley and were surprised. We agreed that it didn't really feel that dangerous. It seemed like the road had been kind of taken care of more recently, especially when we saw a minivan handling it with ease. We decided that, yeah, if you fell off the edge here, you'd be more dead than on other mountain roads, but we were somewhat underwhelmed, to be honest. We spent a few more days in northern Turkey, where the weather changes rapidly. We shouldn't have been surprised when the rain and cold wind came in when we decided to leave. It can be disorienting on the mountain passes when you can barely see what's ahead of you. Eventually, the weather cleared just as we made it off the mountains. We spent the night in a small village. If we covered Turkish food in this video as much as it deserves, you'd be watching us eat for 10 minutes. Over the course of two weeks, we barely even scratched the surface of all the different Turkish food. Each geographic area has its own traditional food, and you owe it to yourself to try it. So the next day in the village, we grabbed a bite to eat after a lazy morning. In Turkey, tea is a staple part of every meal. You sip from these small cups and drink as much as you want. And if you're like me, you add sugar every time. I also tried idan for the first time, which is a cold, refreshing sour yogurt drink that's great for hot weather. So after an early lunch, we got back on the road. Putting big miles behind us, we busted our tails once again to another region of central Turkey. We had seen this road from world travelers that looked like it was carved through the cliffs over a river. It's called the Stone Road, and construction on it first started in 1870. More than 130 years later, they finished carving it out of the cliff sides above the Euphrates River. It still gets closed periodically if rocks fall and block the road. This actually felt more dangerous than the road in the north. We spent all day exploring the cliffs and the surrounding areas. There were people in boats down below, and I wondered what they would do if one of us fell off the cliffs into the water. We planned to stay around here for a few days, so we switched bikes and gear to try out different setups and see how they are. I hadn't ridden the famous 790 yet and wanted to try it out. This was also my first time wearing the new Baja S4 kit and it did great in the hot weather. The terrain and atmosphere here felt really cool to me, so I opted to skip the hotel and camp out over the river. Turkey doesn't have just one layer of culture throughout history. Thousands of years of various cultures settling around the country have left incredible ruins and buildings that transport you back in time. We tried to visit as many historical places as possible, but that's the struggle of almost all adventure riders. There's just so much to see and so little time. A few days later, we kept pushing further south and west, making our way closer to the Mediterranean Sea. Getting into the Taurus Mountains, we rode as far into the terrain as we could, but never found the end of the many routes we could take. It really seemed endless, almost like a different planet. The 
even through the rugged terrain, we would still come across shepherds tending to their animals in remote locations. We stopped in a high plateau near a shepherd camp and were quickly welcomed by the goats and sheep. These shepherd dogs are very intelligent and loyal, so they were wary at first, but soon warmed up to us. This one is the alpha female who's in charge of the whole pack that guards the livestock from wolves. It was drizzly and chilly, so the shepherds gave us some firewood to stay warm. Our trip was almost over. We shared stories and jokes from the journey, reliving the moments by our campfire. On top of everything we did, the best part of traveling is meeting new people. In this case, my friendship with Gundas and Sarkhan has been solidified through our travels together. Our routes and pace were now set for the inevitable return to Istanbul, where we'd go our separate ways and return back to reality. Or was this the real reality? Hard to know. What I do know is that even over the course of two weeks, we hardly scratched the surface of what Turkey has to offer. With more time, we could see more, eat more, ride more, and altogether simply experience more. This is the challenge faced by all of us part-time adventure riders, who try to squeeze in as many experiences as we possibly can in the time available to us. I'm really fortunate to get to ride like this for work at Climb, and it constantly reminds me of why we go to work building the best adventure gear possible. We all work hard to afford the equipment and to make time to ride. Whether it's one weekend a month or one week per year, the one thing we all have in common is a limited time to ride. So with gear, equipment, bikes, our riding buddies, we owe it to ourselves to trust what we take on our adventures to fully immerse ourselves in every experience. I cannot escape, I'm here till it breaks, oh!